Ah, you caught me. I was looking at the, the computer screen. Wow. <laughs> we have shifted into a, a moment in the epoch of this world where the spirit of fear has arisen in the hearts of unbelievers. And God is raising voices now that the world has not heard of. I said it last week, some of the generals of, of yesteryear, of yesterday, will be moved aside. Uh, they won't be removed, they will simply be moved aside and they have their place in what is going to happen. But the scripture says, behold, I do a new thing. And I shared this, uh, one of my closest friends is a, a man of God, very well known. and. Um, I won't say his name, uh, not because I don't want to, but it was a private conversation between him and I. Um, <clears throat> but in that conversation, what we were both agreed on is that coming out of the pandemic, a new, um, how would I put it, almost like a new brand of Christianity would emerge. And I don't mean that from the sake of saying a new, uh, like, a, uh, like we would think of as a, you know, a brand that uh, McDonald's, Nike, something like that. What I mean is that over the last 16 weeks, 18 weeks, men of God that the world has not heard of have been drawn to an understanding of Scripture, an understanding and a revelation of what the Holy Spirit intends to do in this season and beyond this season in a way that those that have how would I put it, mega ministries, whereas they've been focused on keeping their ministry intact, keeping their, their congregation and their, their, uh, their ministry together, those that have not had the profile, the significance, the impact yet, have been able to press into uh, a depth of understanding, a depth of revelation, a depth of anointing that the world has not seen, has not experienced, has not embraced. And as we move out of this season, what we'll see is God begin to move in ways that are completely unfamiliar and unknown to us. But because we've not experienced them in our generation, does not mean to say it's not the Spirit of God. That's why God says, Behold, I will do a new thing. You know, the scripture says, and I can't remember the exact reference, but it talks about not looking to the former things. Paul said, Forgetting the things which are behind me, I press forward, whereas we have been taught to press into God. The truly significant shift in the realms of the spirit that manifests here in the natural happens when we press forward to God. See, the Holy Spirit shows us in the Word of God that God is consistently moving. God is consistently moving. The Bible says that when the temple of the Lord was finished and God came down out of heaven, because twice in Scripture we see God step out of heaven and, and enter the earth, the Bible says that his train filled the temple. Now, there's a very significant thing that if you don't know anything about monarchy, you don't have an understanding about monarchy, you, don't, you miss what the significance of the train filling the temple is. So, in the monastical order, no, that's, the, that's monks, in the monarchical order of Israel and the tribes and the, 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 the uh, peoples, the nations around Israel in the days of the Old Testament, the biblical days, the greater the size of the train, the longer the train, signifies the significance and the size of the kingdom over which you ruled. Okay? I've had the privilege <clears throat> of being in Parliament when I've seen the lords in their robes, very small train, carried over their arm. 
I've had the privilege of seeing in the flesh Queen Elizabeth's train that is carried by six pages as she processes into Parliament once a year for the state opening in her full regalia. Very significant train. Why? Because her kingdom is vast. When Queen Victoria sat on the throne and we still had the British Empire, the train was even longer. Why? Because it signified the size of the kingdom over which she ruled. So the Bible says that the that the Lord, the, 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 the train of his garment, I'm excited in my spirit, I can feel something happening. The train of his garment filled the temple. So that means that for it to fill the temple signifies the size of the kingdom over which God rules. But there is a very significant thing in that that we miss. And that is this, if you are looking at the train of a monarch, what you're looking at is where the king or the queen has passed by. See, when the Bible says the train of his robe filled the temple, what it was telling us is when they saw that, God had already moved through. So we are focusing on generations of leaders that are focused on the train filling the temple. And God is telling us, don't focus on the train, focus on the presence. If you're looking at the train, I've already passed by. I want you to be with me in the presence of the king, in the presence of the king of kings. And you can't be in his presence if all you're focused on is the train. Somebody watching me now, somebody watching me now has been so focused on their past that you're missing what God wants to do in this current season of your life. You're so focused on the hurts, the pains, the, the, the insignificances of the past. And this is what the enemy has done to you in such a way that because you've been so focused on what has happened, you're missing what is happening because you're so focused on where God once was in your life, you're missing where God is right now. Because you're so focused on looking at the temple, you are not functioning in the presence. God is shifting this earth to a position where leaders emerge. I believe it is the 200 sons of Issachar of this generation that will emerge men of God that understand the power of his presence, but understand the person of his presence. And as we transition into the person and the personage, into being in his presence, we see things, we experience things that we have not experienced before, that we have not seen before. I've said it a couple of weeks Running now, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 29, 29, For the secret things belong to God, but that which He has chosen to reveal. And we are now in a day, in an age, in an epoch, in an eon of church life, where God is choosing to reveal more and more and more, but He is only revealing it to a very small, very significant group of people. And we must attune our ear to what the Spirit is saying in this hour because God will only speak through a handful of prophets. The precursor of the prophetic anointing is not someone that gives you words of wisdom and words of knowledge in the parking lot that can speak with a word of knowledge. It is someone that by the insights of God, by the, what the Hebrews call binach, prophetic wisdom, can interpret God's intention accurately like the 200 sons of Issachar can instruct what God's desire is in this age like the 200 sons of Issachar but call nations to repentance and call nations to worship because that is what the sons of Issachar did they called the people of God back to God to worship on the holy mountain and we must attune our ear very very succinctly to those who God is actually speaking through and the problem with being in such a position 
in this in this season is that God will choose to speak through people we don't think God is speaking through and we miss what God is saying because the packaging doesn't meet our expectations of who God would use but there is a supernatural shifting happening in a handful of people in comparison to the number of people on this earth that they have reached a point where they know beyond a shadow of a doubt enough is enough that we're not going to be beaten down anymore that we're not going to be browbeaten anymore that we are going to stand up and proclaim a truth that is not popular not entertaining not a truth that solely makes you feel good but a truth that is true truth some of you've heard me say before there to, to me and my understanding there are two kinds of truth there is relative truth as in that is a truth but it's relative only to the belief to the individual and then there's true truth and God is God is true truth his truth is absolutely true whether you believe it or not whether you think it's relevant or not he is still true truth and in this day and hour in this day and in this hour we are seeing preachers coming forward that are daring to preach true truth that is unpoliticized that is unencumbered by agenda that is unhindered by ego men and women of god that as paul said will make themselves of no reputation but will simply disappear into the the insignificance of allowing the holy spirit to speak through them which is what makes them significant in the kingdom there's a great danger in having ideas and what i've experienced in the last 16 weeks is church and church leaders that have incredible ideas but that's all they are their ideas and i've heard idea after idea after idea after idea i had a conversation with somebody just yesterday talking about the fact that leaders have so many ideas there's a significant a truly significant danger in the process of ideas and that is we see it in politics people come up with so many ideas no action ever happens nothing ever happens just idea after idea after idea and we as a church we as leaders in the church we as believers in the church have got to get to this point where even if we haven't got an idea what we do in action speaks far more than the brilliant ideas that we keep having keep having I, i've told so many people so many times the wealthiest place in any city in fact i said it last week the wealthiest place in any city is the cemetery and the reason i say it's the cemetery is because there is so much unrealized potential unutilized ideas laying in the ground and we have got to we have got to remind ourselves you know James the brother of Jesus wrote in in his epistle for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead faith and we cannot come out of what we're going through as we're all starting to come out, to come out. some countries i know are going back into it because of a second wave and third waves and all this kind of stuff but we can't come out of what we're going through and what we've just experienced and all we've got is ideas we've got to come out firing on all all cylinders we've got to be like a v12 engine forget the the the, the straight fours and the straight sixes forget the v8s we have got to come out like a v12 roaring full of power firing on all cylinders because actions speak louder than words god is not looking for a church that is idealistic and idea based god is looking for a church that is a church in action 
believers that actually are involved in winning the lost. I have had so many leaders in this season that have spoken to me, that have talked to me, told me I'm planning this and planning that. And, and do you know how many times I have said to my brothers and my sisters, stop planning, start doing. I am 100% convinced if it had been up to Jesus to plan the cross, he'd still be planning it because nobody wants to go through that. But having realized there was no way around this, he got on with the business of redemption. Having realized there is no other way to save the world than to preach the living Jesus Christ, to preach the gospel. Why are we still planning our ways of doing it? Why are we still planning our missions programs? Why are we still planning our revivals? Get on and do it. Quit talking. Start doing. Quit planning. Start acting. One of two things will happen. That is, you'll either make a mistake and you'll learn, or when you step out and do something, God will actually back you up. But we're waiting for everything to be lined up perfectly before we will step out and do what needs to be done. If I had started this media project and waited until we had the equipment, waited until everything was right, waited until I could do this and have the space to broadcast from instead of having to use a room in my house, have a separate office, you know, have the audio stuff that I want to do for, for changing the podcast that we do and, and having guests on, which is my next stage, which I'm going to do next year probably, or, or as God leads. If I'd have waited for all of that, guess what? I would still be waiting. But I knew... I had a loaned computer. I had a camera that worked. So I just got on and did it. Let me tell you this. I was sitting in my, in my house one day. I was working at the dining table. I had not live streamed in over a year and a half. I had no desire to. I did not want to do it. I was just coming out of uh, a very, very difficult period of my life, most of which was self-inflicted because I don't blame the devil for everything. I know quite often God leaves me up to my own devices and lets me deal with myself. God will take his hand off me and say, listen, son, you, you just go learn from what you're doing. I don't, need to, I don't need the devil to tempt you or test you, and I don't need to interject. I just need to leave you to yourself for a few minutes, and you'll soon realize, and, and I did. I made, I made some mistakes, some big ones, some small ones but I got on with fixing my life and getting my life right. And I was ill. I had very high blood pressure, couldn't bring it down. Still quite high, but it's, it's coming down and we're, we're working to get off the, well, I should say I'm working, my doctor's not. I'm working to get off the blood pressure medication because I have no intention of being on it. Because of stress and other things that were going on, um, I had a very mild, heart attack um, kind of hit me for six that such a thing happened at such a young age and for 18 months I literally like an ostrich buried my head in the sand I had three speaking engagements I couldn't get out of I pretty much cancelled everything else wasn't taking any speaking engagements didn't want to do interviews didn't want to speak to people within ministry and I'm sitting here working at my, my dining room table one day. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I want you to go live and teach tonight. And I could have thought, what a brilliant idea. And let me plan it all. And missed a moment. But I didn't. Didn't tell anybody I was going live, didn't advertise it, didn't put any posts out. I just fired up my computer with nothing more than a webcam on the laptop I was using. 
borrowed laptop. Cheap microphone that I plugged in. $20 microphone on Amazon. And I went live. I had no idea that within the space of two or three weeks, the whole country, pretty much the whole world, was going to be locked down. But I bit the bullet and I did what God asked me to do. But none of that would have happened if I were still planning. None of that would have happened if I had set out a strategy for how to do it. Because I would have worked out the end goal, worked out how to get there, taken goodness knows how long to get there. I would still be planning, still be planning what God is now doing. So I want to say this, just get involved in action. Quit the planning, quit the strategizing. I know some things need a plan. I know some things need a strategy, but preaching the gospel doesn't. 